Hi, welcome to video 2. In video 1, we have looked at some of the properties of ionic compounds. In this video, we are going to look at metals and some of its properties. So firstly, let's look at metallic bonding in metals. We know that metal atoms have low electronegativity and relatively low ionization energy, such that they lose the electron easily to form cations. And inside a metal, the cations are being arranged in a lattice structure similar to your ionic compound, but instead of uh, having cations and anions arranged in a lattice structure, there are only metal cations that are being arranged in a lattice structure. The valence electron uh, form a sea of uh, mobile electrons that can move freely throughout the metal. So these electrons are said to be delocalized. And the metallic bond actually are uh, the forces of attraction between the solid uh, lattice of uh, metal cations and the mobile sea of uh, electrons. So these forces of attraction are very strong. And if we were to boil or to melt a metal, we need to uh, break this very strong forces of attraction. So a large amount of energy is required and metals have a generally very high melting point. Okay, so let's look at the strength of a metallic bond. Okay. The strength of a metallic bond depends on three factors. First is the number of electrons contributed to the valency of uh, electrons. Sorry, contributed to the delocalized sea of electrons and the charge and size of cations. So you can see that more delocalized electron, higher charge and smaller size uh, cation will have a stronger metallic bond, which will result in higher melting and bonding point. So let's use the example of uh, aluminum and uh, sodium to compare. Okay. A way to uh, look at the charge and size is to use uh, something we call the charge density which is equivalent to the charge over the size of the cation. So let's look at aluminum, which is a, a relatively small cation compared to your sodium plus, which is a relatively bigger. Okay. So sodium will only have one electron, but aluminum will have three electrons. On an average around the cation. Okay, because it's a mobile sea of electron, they are free to move. So sometimes there might be more electron, sometimes there might be lesser. But on the average is uh, around three for aluminum and around one for sodium. So imagine now I have uh, a very high amount of charge inside sodium. Okay, this one will have total of three positive charge. But for your For your sodium, okay, I use a lighter color because the charge is not so concentrated. I only have a one plus charge, okay, and it's a uh, diffuse throughout the larger sodium plus. So the force of attraction for your aluminum three plus cations and the electrons is expected to be stronger, okay, due to the high charge density compared to your sodium plus, which is a weaker charge density okay so therefore aluminum will have a larger boiling point sorry higher boiling point compared to sodium and uh, manganese as well because manganese is uh, sorry not manganese is magnesium which is in group 2 okay so let's look at another group of uh, metals which is called the transition metals and I have used the example of titanium so you can see that for titanium, we can consider them uh, to be having four valence electron because uh, the 3D and 4S atomic orbitals are very close in energy. So when I'm removing electron from uh, 4S, I can also remove electrons from 3D relatively easily. So I cannot separate between the two of them. So I can call both of them valence uh, electrons Okay, so when I have four valence electron, you can see that the boiling point is much higher than your the rest of the metals. Okay, 
Okay. However, please take note that we cannot use the uh, number of valence electron to compare melting point of transition metals because uh, transition metals are having a high number of valence electron and towards the end it might not be so feasible to remove all of them. Okay. Let's look at conductivity. Okay. For metals which are having a delocalization of electrons, we will expect them to be very good conductors of uh, electricity. Okay. And liquid metals can also conduct electricity because uh, although the solid lattice is now broken down, we still have uh, delocalized electrons and these electrons are still able to conduct electricity. Okay. They are also very good conductors of heat because the heat energy can be picked up by the electron and they can transfer the kinetic energy. So if uh, I have a piece of metal, okay, I start heating it up here. Okay, so the electrons here will move and they will transfer the kinetic energy to some of the atoms over here. Okay, they will transfer the kinetic energy, therefore metals are very good conductor of heat. The final property that we are going to talk about in this video is that metals are very malleable and ductile. Okay. To understand this, let's look at the structure. Okay. When I apply a very small stress on the structure of the metal, okay, the metals are free to roll over each other. Okay. Because the valence uh, shell, sorry, the mobile sea of uh, electrons actually shield the cations uh, from each other and they are able to roll over each, each other without breaking the metallic bond. So if I apply a very small stress, the layer is able to fall back to its original position and I call this uh, elastic. So you can see that some of the metals, you can bend them and they will go back to the shape easily if you don't uh, bend it too hard. Okay. However, if I bend the metal using a very large force, okay, the metal can be permanently deformed. Okay? So if you have seen some spoons that are slightly out of shape, that is because they are permanently deformed. Okay? For those people who eat with a lot of strength, okay, try not to apply too much strength because uh, you will deform the metal. Okay? So that's all that I have for this uh, video. And for the last video, we will be looking at covalence compound and the physical property.